right, so just a couple of more pieces I want to say. Um, so leading by example. So as managers or leaders in your company, or if you're self again, self-led, this idea of be first of all, fostering a a leader autonomy way of operating. So that's encouraging the employees to manage their own workflows, really avoiding the micromanaging. And over and over again, research shows that when people feel that they're self-led, where they can manage their own flow of work, they can solve their problem, their boss is still there to come in, but there's a lot of autonomy. That actually, that style leads to the highest levels of productivity. So leading by example means letting the employees manage what they're doing, including sometimes their time, which was really hard for many managers to do. Managers also setting boundaries, making sure you're clear when you're sending your emails, right? Being clear about the urgency of items. That is so key to your workplace so that they're not getting these late night or weekend emails, which again can make everyone feel like, oh, I got to show up. I got to do this on a Saturday. Taking care by participating in wellness opportunities and doing this carefully. It can be tone deaf for a uh, manager to come in and say, oh, I'm doing all these well-being activities and the workforce or the employees have no time to do this. Um, so we want to make sure that it actually is matching the time allocated to the workplace. So if, um, you know, there's a well-being seminar and everyone's involved and invited, that's great for the manager to show up at, right? Employers that are willing to say, I don't know, I'm not sure, right? So that creates a more open exchange where um, an employee might come back with a good idea and feel that they're valued. That's how we create inspiration too, when we when we don't have to know it all as the employer. The compassion and care goes such a long way. Over and over again during the pandemic, we saw so many examples of compassion and care helping people stay connected. And if someone is struggling, um, you know, to be able to reach out, it really matters. And again, we have to do this carefully if it looks like it's, you know, not done with with compassion or if it looks like it's done in, in a way that could be held against the person, we want it, then people are not going to be open. But taking the time to just sit down and check in to ask about how someone is doing, ask about someone's family or um, how they're they're holding up during the pandemic, it can go a long way. And that compassion, you know, can create a sense of belonging and engagement. And then what are the resources and really having clear delineated resources when employees are struggling? You know, it, it is helpful. I, I often tell this to um, to different corporations. It's like have have a decision tree where you can really look at if someone's coming in with this issue that you have three or four or five suggestions so that it isn't just this simple like, oh, you should go to EAP and um, or, you know, have the person walk away feeling embarrassed that they even said anything. Being able to refer people for proper, you know, treatment, and that doesn't mean you have to know names, particularly of, of therapists, but how do you give them um, options and considerations? You know, where can you help people turn to?